Uh, no, it should be better, Tom. Hearing me? No sound, Michael Johnson. And uh, no, it should be better. Hello, Michael. Hello, Nogging the, nogging the Nog. Uh, you were here the, uh, yesterday, uh, Nogging the Nog. Thank you for being there again. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, now, yes, I'm, uh, I'm learning. My, uh, there is a software which is called uh, OBS uh, Studio behind, and uh, I have a setup for waiting, uh, waiting panel and uh, another setup for the actual stream. And uh, there are some different uh, audio capture bars and anything. So uh, I'm learning. I'm, uh, so you have some uh, you have some sound. No, very good. And so uh, yes, this afternoon was about printing here at home because uh, I need to update my uh, sheet box and uh, I've been lazy uh, last month. So. Hey, uh, Fred. Hello. Uh, I've been lazy last month and uh, I, I had the node version of Sheetubox and now I've installed the last one. Uh, I need to make an update on my printer and I uh, thought it was also time to compare with uh, Litchi Slicer. Uh, so a little bit of uh, in, uh, browsing and surfing to compare my uh, to compare my uh, the, uh, slicing softwares and uh, tonight after the stream I'll be performing a test. Uh, you might have seen I'm working on the, my Tiger my Tiger Cat cockpit, and uh, I now need to print just a tiny row of switches because uh, in many places in my cockpit I have. Perf I did some holes to use my friend uh, Tom Annie's uh, switches. But on some place on my uh, panel board, I did some holes which are too close, and my switch my switches are overlapping. So I need to make just one bar of uh, switches which are next to another, and so that we don't see an overlap. So, so this kind of thing was was happening this afternoon on the on the bench. And so uh, on previous stream. Uh, streams. Uh, we did first uh, a tire. Uh, you might remember we did a tire, and uh, we've been working together on how to make some uh, grooves and a diamond uh, pattern on a thread. And uh, in another stream, we did uh, some uh, rims to assemble on our uh, and snap uh, and uh, on, so that we can snap them on uh, each side of the tire. And now we have an interesting step, which a few months ago was for me the most complicated one with Fusion. And uh, now you'll see that with Blender, we'll be performing a far shorter process on our tires. And uh, you'll be able to see if it's uh, worth or not going a little bit into Blender and uh, going and exploring this uh, interface which you'll see in a minute uh, if like me you're more at ease with fusion 360 you'll see it's a quite uh, a hostile environment uh, maybe some of you here in the in the chat room uh, are more familiar with blender so anytime guys feel free to give uh, help insights uh, or any thoughts because yesterday, actually, one of you uh, uh, had a brilliant idea and uh, sorted uh, a symmetry problem, which is which ended up in going uh, even faster in uh, in the process. So uh, I have a, a screen down there. I can check in the in the what what you type in the chat. So feel free. Uh, you normally comments are. Comments uh, are available too. Uh, links are available too. If you have uh, links with tutorials to share or anything, normally it would work in the, in the chat. And uh, if not, uh, same. Just uh, just let me know, and uh, I'll try to sort this out for our next videos. Uh, so you have a site on my laptop screen. 
one of my two current projects, uh, my Seahawk, my ugly face, and now let's start with Blender. And uh, yesterday we did a stream on the fly because uh, YouTube made me a bad joke because when uh, planning my uh, my session which, which was due to happen uh, tonight uh, there's a funny thing which happens in the uh, YouTube studio software is when you type the hour when you hit uh, save for your setting I uh, didn't notice that the hour uh, comes back to the present time when you record your your setting. And uh, so yesterday night, I had friends uh, knocking at my screen and uh, saying, "We're ready, we're ready, and uh, <laughs> ready for what? And ready for the stream?" So uh, I rushed and uh, did uh, did the stream yesterday night. Reason why you you, you have uh, maybe seen it already on YouTube. So now we're making it. Much more in the, much less in on the fly. Uh, so let's get started with uh, so blend, Blender at, uh, at the opening. Blender, uh, it's one of the last, uh, maybe the last one version. It's Blender uh, 3.0.0. And uh, usual start with Blender, you have a cube, a light, and a camera because Blender uh, opens to you uh, a space on a scenery when you can model some objects, but also some uh, backgrounds, terrains, scenery, and uh, you can build a, a whole picture, a whole scene, actually, and uh, you can even animate it. It's, uh, in the end, it's an extremely powerful uh, software. And uh, we are going to be using a, a few drops of the uh, possibilities uh, of Blender for our modeling purpose. So, if you're not familiar, uh, just a quick quick overview of the software. Uh, each object is uh, on this uh, file tree up there. Uh, on an object, there are several modes, an object mode, an edit mode, where now when I come into the edit mode, you can see vertices, edges, which connect to vertices, and faces. And there are three buttons up there, where the we have different menu according to the vertice uh, editing mode, the edge editing mode, or the face editing mode. So you have to be aware of and, uh, whether you are in object mode or edit mode. And once in the edit mode, you have to be aware, are you manipulating uh, vertices, edges, or faces? That's uh, first thing to be aware of, because all menus adapt to, to this situation. Then there's a scope mode, where you have brushes and uh, uh, sculpt mode, uh, mind you, uh, ZBrush software is a bit more famous and uh, it's uh, putting the flesh just uh, like uh, clay. You can uh, smooth uh, your surfaces, you can draw, uh, you can punch, you can pull some blobs or, the, or you can ev uh, even create some uh, close wrinkles. All this, all this stuff happens in the sculpt mode and to be honest, the three other modes I haven't explored them yet, so uh, I won't. Uh, I won't be making a tutorial on something I, I don't know. So I'm going back to the object mode. Then uh, on the right side here, there are several uh, icons and menus. We'll be using two of them. The range here is a modifier menu. It's uh, a series of tools which a bit like uh, you can take the comparison with Light, Lightroom uh, photograph editing software. Different tools you can stack in, in a pile and the pile will give the, the, an order of uh, action of, uh, from, these tools, from these tools on your object. The order could be, can be modified. And uh, as long as you don't hit uh, the apply function, 
it's reversible. Change uh, you can ch change anything or edit your the action of your modifier, or you can also export your STL file without the modifier action. You you decide there's a toggle button where you you impl you you decide if you put the modifier action or not on your, before you export your your file uh, as an STL. So we'll be using one of them uh, in a few in a few minutes. And the other one we'll need tonight is uh, this little green triangle with two points where we can set uh, groups of uh, vertex or, ver or vertices. We'll, be, we'll need to freeze a part of uh, our tire uh, at the beginning and uh, so we'll need this particular menu ver uh, vertex groups uh, which is also also uh, useful in the simulation uh, simulation uh, modifiers same task just to freeze some vertices it's uh, uh, the main reason i've been so far using the, this menu uh, in my short blend blender uh, journey so we'll get rid of this cube we don't need it uh, I don't know yet. Uh, I'll try to find for further. For further, I don't like the word tutorials because uh, it's more share of my short knowledge about it so far. Uh, I don't have the, the key to show uh, my uh, the hotkeys I'll be using. I try to to give you to give you them uh, on the fly uh, as I do it because Blender works a lot. You need a lot of. Uh, uh, of work with uh, with hotkeys more than uh, fusion is able for for that but i don't know if it's the same for you guys on fusion i, I work a lot with a mouse and uh, on my on my keyboard i mainly use uh, the, the numpad for 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 the extrusions uh, values but uh, on blender there is much more uh, hotkeys on keypad uh, on keypad uh, work on keyboard work and uh, so we need to import our files. So let's go to import and STL. Uh, so my messy laptop, I'm going uh, in wheels. So I take a tire, a rim, and my front cover and import them. And uh, here's our thing. Uh, Blender beginners like me, you'll see that in tutorials there is a lot to do uh, with scaling. Uh, I imported an STL file which is already in scale. I won't be touching to any measure or anything. Uh, I'll be showing you that some uh, some measures appear as uh, when will will appear when we'll be making some displacement. I don't know much about scaling. It's a, a common thing uh, which we hear about uh, on Blender tutorials. Many issues are sorted by uh, applying scale, which is which sounds familiar to me, but. I don't really understand yet what it's about, so I'm working from a already in size uh, file and uh, we'll just be modeling it, so we, we won't touch more than that to, to, to the measures. So first thing, uh, we want to create a bulge on our tire and so on the principle, we'll be going to push the lower part of the, of the tire up to create a flat side, and we will pull the sides of the tire to create a rounded bulge. And doing this, Blender will be playing with the, uh, with the rubber material, with the flesh of the file. And f as we did earlier, uh, an educated work, let's say, to have a a slight fit for the rim. Uh, we first want to keep the, 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 uh, this fit working good, and so we need our inner contour of the tire not to move. We want to freeze it, and uh, so I'm going to go up, uh, upright and uh, 
just by clicking on the eyes, I'll be hiding not my tar, but my front cover, my camera, I don't need it. Okay, just uh, I'm hiding everything but my tar. And we'll, we'll start by creating a group of uh, vertices to freeze our contour. So, just because I've been playing with Fusion a few minutes ago, I need to get back and my pan and the slide on every movement, which are a bit different. Right, okay, I'm, I mean, I'm there. We'll move upright up there and uh, change our view to the and uh, hit the toggle X-ray uh, menu. And on the grid uh, just uh, beside, so that we see all the vertices. And the toggle uh, on the X ray mode allows me, when selecting something on my screen, to select also the, the vertices and uh, anything behind. And uh, if I don't have this command uh, activated, I'll be only work, uh, selecting what appears on my screen and anything behind uh, won't, won't be selected. So I'm going there and so that I can see all the mesh. I hit my little gizmo here, X, and I'll try. Uh, so I hit to make a, uh, an easy selection. There's a C key which gives me this little brush with I can adjust the side with my uh, mouse uh, uh, middle uh, wheel button and now we need to select our contour and we need to select the less uh, we need first to go to edit mode you see so uh, escape you see how blender can be easy sometimes so I'm in edit mode, I hit C, and now I can select my vertices. And I'll try to select uh, as less vertices as possible because it's one of the traps of this method. There will be a transition between any movable part of my mesh and my uh, what we we'll call our pin group what on the, the frozen vertices if i uh, select too many of them uh, i'll have more visible uh, artifacts showing up so we want to be uh, a little bit to make a tiny work and uh, on yesterday's stream just to let you know, I haven't been very disciplined and thought, okay, I just need to be to be fine with the lower portion of my tire. And uh, I did a, a quick and ugly selection uh, on top of this uh, of this circle, and I ended up with uh, quite some visible uh, artifacts on top of my tire, even if we were just pushing the flesh of uh, the tire on the on the southern uh, hemisphere of the tire so we'll be more careful tonight there we go we continue and don't forget on this step so to be in the x-ray mode so that you see it's a bit tedious work it's uh, maybe one of the only moments where you have to be careful and tedious and it will hopefully pay off uh, in the end yep. this one here right we have our selection now so we want to go we hold, uh, hit uh, escape to leave this uh, brush selection mode. And now we go to vertex group, hit plus to create a group, double click and double click and rename pin group. And uh, enter and now don't forget because I don't find it very uh, I don't find it's an easy interface at the beginning. We hit assign and now it's difficult uh, when you go to another menu to see 
which vertices are actually in your pin group. Uh, once you lose the sight on it, I haven't found a way to come back and check which vertices are actually in my uh, in my pin group. So that's the moment where you you want to be concentrated because you, uh, you when renaming the pin group, you hit enter. You you can't have the impression you have done your you have done your group, but don't forget to hit assign. On your on your group, and now you should be now we should be good. So now I can go back to the object mode. We leave the X-ray mode. We come back here on the viewport, what they call the viewport uh, shading. Uh, no, right, okay, this way. And I'll put my uh, front cover on my rim back into position because uh, we want uh, at every moment not to lose contact with re reality. You'll see that the, the effect is uh, going quite quick and uh, easily and it's easy to lose your mind and make to, uh, to go too far in, uh, in, your, in your flattening and uh, in, your, in your bulging. And uh, so we have our tire and the tool we'll be using to displace the, the material will be uh, a cage. A cage which uh, in Blender is called a lattice. I hope I pronounce it uh, correctly. So a lattice which I selected and now you won't see it because no worries it's hidden uh, no, it's, it's hidden uh, right there. So I click on it to select it. I hit S for scale and I pull this uh, selection uh, arrow with my mouse just to pull it out and uh, so that I can see what, uh, what I'm doing. I just reselect my, uh, my tire. And now here we see this cage around our wheel and uh, from experience uh, I know we don't need such a large one and I'm going to rescale it because uh, uh, maybe it's time to talk about another concept which is uh, uh, if I remember the English word it's a uh, proportional editing that's it's uh, something there is a, a toggle switch here the proportional editing is on blend uh, on blender or any other uh, mesh manipulation software it says the equivalent in the form uh, in the form mode in uh, fusion when you pull a little part of your mesh it will uh, decide how much the vicinity of your mesh will be influenced and will be following your displacement so there's a, there's a toggle switch on Blender to activate or not the, the proportional editing. But even when it's deactivated, there's a tiny amount of it happening. And actually, it's, it will be far enough with the cage without the proportional editing. Or maybe let's rather consider it at, uh, <coughs> at its minimum. It will be more than enough. And uh, that's actually what if I believe correct, if I understand correctly the software, that's what will be making our, our, our task. So now I'm going to reduce the size of the overall cage. From experience, uh, I will show you the shape I've been mostly using. So uh, I'll be sizing it with a scale tool, which is the S key, which I just hit. And I will constrain it on the Z axis, on the Z axis. Uh, so after S, I hit Z, and now you see my uh, blue line has been a little bit uh, unlighted, and uh, so now my movement will be reduced on the Z axis, as, uh, such as this. I'm going to move it down, my catch downwards, my lattice downwards. So I need to grab. Uh, so J uh, in English, in English, in, in English and French, it's uh, inverted. Uh, for you, uh, it's G, uh, G, uh, and I'll, constra I'll constrain my movement on the Z, so G, Z, and I move my lattice down, and it's still too high, so I rescale it a little bit again, 
and I won't be needing more than this in height no, normally and uh, now we are in a position to show you a trap I've been falling into at the beginning is was to use a two uh, wide uh, lattice as well we won't need uh, the lattice to go so much uh, from a, uh, from a side to another of the thread uh, line so I'm going to rescale it on the green axis which is uh, in blender it's a y axis so normally from experience we should be fine with such a size and will be more than at ease with, with this size and I'm going to rescale it on this side as well so s X and now we have an overall uh, contour of the cage which will be more than uh, more than enough and I maybe still uh, risk it on the Y I'm, I'm going to reduce it a little bit normally you, we should be fine uh, this way so uh, here's our outer lattice and now will be sculpting our tire by moving the vertices the points the, the eight now we have eight of them it's a uh, we need more than that and so we're going on the right hand side menu and we have the resolution of our lattice and from experience uh, going at four and uh, here maybe let's say five will be good five because we want a center line here that's the, the, the reason why and uh, here uh, three of them uh, should be enough just the difference we want an uneven uh, figure here to have uh, a center line and so that we can pull the the very the very top of our uh, of our bulge but uh, no no big deal so we have our lattice uh, done uh, and now we are going to select our tire and go to the modifier menu and in the modifier menu we look for deform lattice and here we go lattice object so the software wants us to tell which la which lattice will be working we have only one of them so I've been lazy, I didn't give it a, a particular name, which would be possible. So lattice, the vertex group, vertex group, it's our pin group, that's the moment we select it. And with this little toggle switch, which says invert vertex group influence, uh, not easy to, to see what it means. If, if it's activated, if it's blue, our vertices uh, in the pin group are frozen right sorry still with me i didn't kill you yet so now i can select my lattice and let's cross fingers normally it's a moment where it doesn't work i'm going to edit mode and let's say we start with a we try to create a, a flat area you see I'm um, just putting a view so that I can go and uh, see all my vertices and make a, sele a group selection they all appear and I hit the same as before the grab uh, function so G and on the Z axis G Z Z and here it goes and it starts to move right I'm going to select my lattice it may be a bit wide and now now we've been making the most difficult task the most tedious part now it's just the fun part of selecting our vertices and will be literally sculpting our tire with vertices so I'm just checking I have you see uh, you see my selection this center as I move upwards I, s I tend to select uh, uh, 
a less and less wide uh, amount of uh, vertices and so I took this selection so G and Z and I'm pushing my tire up and you see I might even still be a little uh, a little wide so but uh, we'll, we'll keep it uh, this way and that, that's the reason why you don't need too much uh, a long lattice along the, the, the walling line, the wall line. And you see, which is uh, cool, we have to differentiate, uh, to make a difference between uh, the, how would say, the simulation tools which uh, happen in Blender. Here, we are in, a, in our move, we push the rubber up but the, the, the software isn't extrapolating. Okay, it's a, it's a tire, there are pressure uh, behind, and it's, uh, the software won't be creating the, the lateral bulge. And I, I actually prefer to, to keep some control uh, over this because we are, uh, we are making some, some sculpting at the moment. We are, we are putting our, our personal view on our tire. We are, we are not letting the software do his thing. And uh, you might, uh, behind there's all the discussion of uh, are we making just a, a copy of blueprints? Are we making a, a lifeless or just a very mechanical drawing? Uh, no, uh, at this moment, we are, we are in, in my, I firmly believe that at this moment, we are, we are putting our, our guts in our, in our drawing. We are, we are making a sculpt and, we can control if we want to have a, a good visible bulge we can decide uh, let's say this tiger cat is on air, uh, is uh, on the aircraft carrier so it has a an over over inflated tire uh, a high pressure uh, tire so i don't want much of a bulge or i decide this tire is uh, uh, on a marine tiger cat on a on, on a base on the ground with a uh, with a soft uh, pressure i want some more bulge at the moment you have all the control you want you uh, and which uh, that's a big fun of uh, of, of the thing uh, i fairly firmly believe it so uh, now why not select the upper uh, taken too much of them let's go and move to the upper floor of our lattice and move it a little bit up and you see and uh, I there's something I'd like to emphasize I'm going to hit ctrl Z and reverse come back at the very beginning I'm going to move and show you I'm going to object mode. I'm selecting my tire and I'm going to rotate it and put some uh, some letters, uh, let's say the Goodyear, uh, the Goodyear details in the lattice so that you can see how much the details are, uh, are moved quite smoothly and, uh, and uh, quite nicely. So I hit R for rotate and I'm going to constrain my rotation on the X and normally, yes, it works. I'm going to put my Goodyear logo downwards so that we'll see how Blender deals with it. I'm going to take the opportunity as well to rescale a little bit my lattice. As you can, uh, if I rescale it now, I think I'll be pushing my flesh. Let's see if I scale it on the Y. No, it's good. I can move it. Right. Mm, let, uh, a bit too much. Oh. So let's get back into it. Edit mode. And okay, let's push first floor. So G, the Z, and let's go up. Right. I'm taking. Next floor, see I'm taking less vertices, and again, the choice of going uh, with less and less vertices I, as I go up, it's a personal preference. You have uh, plenty of ways, I bet, to, to, uh, to make your way and to, 
and to do it differently. It's just a, a sight of what could be done. And uh, let's make a nice flat because the Marines in Korea were on a harsh field. So I'm just checking them have a good symmetry. You see down there, my thread is unaffected, just flat, but not damaged. And here, my logo. Here's a cut line around there has been just following the, the move as it should. And you see my letters. I'm, going, I'm trying not to make you see sick with, with all my moves. Not bad, not bad. There we go. And now we want to create the side bulge. Side bulge. And uh, yesterday I've been learning a cool thing because at first, so I'm going to make a fake move here. So I hit uh, G and Z. And if you look top left of your screen, you can see the value of your move. So now it says, it, it's why I was referring to um, to scaling uh, a few minutes ago. So we have a move in, uh, you see, one meter, 1.4 meters or something. So the scaling in Blender is something uh, a bit uh, blurry for me so far. So uh, I hit right click on the, right click on the mouse to cancel my move. So I had to keep uh, in mind that when pushing my vertices on the side, I took the habit to notice, to, to remember how far I'm going on the side, so that the opposite vertices would get the same move with just the, the opposite way. With a, if, I, if I move, uh, let's say, 1.5 meters on the right, uh, I would select the opposite vertice and, uh, vertex and move it at minus 1.5 meters on the other uh, on the, uh, on the same axis. And uh, yesterday, because when I was preparing this stream, uh, I've been looking at different ways to to get this symmetry, because uh, there is a symmetry modifier in Blender, which always made me end up with uh, also uh, having a symmetry of my letters. Uh, which appeared mirrored and uh, which overlapped and uh, I had uh, one side overlapping the other side. So not good. I didn't find a, a good way with a mirror modifier. There was a solution to work only one side of the bulging on a complete tire. And once uh, uh, I was happy with this side, I would use a vertical plan to slice my tire in two duplicate my half tire, rotate it by 180 degrees on the Z axis. It worked because I've been lucky enough at the very beginning to start my diamond thread at the very uh, top of my tire and uh, to have my first uh, diamond centered at the very top uh, of the tire so that uh, thanks to this uh, lucky move I could have a, a flush center line and a good fit with all my uh, blocks. So it works, but it, it needs uh, anticipating. And there is actually much more, a much more easy way is to select the vertices you need for your side movement. So let's see here, my, this line is a bit close. To the ground level, the bulge usually appears a bit higher. So I'm going to select those vertices. I'm going to select the opposite ones. I'm checking I haven't selected some more. And now I'm, I'll be using for my move the scale on the X axis. And you see magic. I'm going to pull my bulge. And here we are. I'm going to pull this bulge. Uh, and now it's just a matter of making things happen. Uh, 
quite nicely. Uh, let's say I want to have a bit more pointy bulge, so I'm selecting vertices, those ones apart the middle one, which was the main reason for choosing an uneven number of uh, of loops uh, and uh, scale x. And now just push a little bit back. Up. Up again. So that uh, I can see. Let's see here the profile. You see the. Uh, I want. Uh, a triangular-ish profile, which will by uh, the progressive edit. Uh, pro uh, I always keep in mind progressive with the proportional editing. Sorry, will pull a gentle uh, rounded curve. You see, and uh, maybe why not? Let's see if I can go back to my lattice, and uh, I'd like another line here. Just trying to see if I can. No, nope, not this one. It's in. No, nope, the last one. Can I get another one? Yep. Cool. First time I try. I'll be honest. First time I try this uh, this thing. And now I can, for instance, select those two ones. And you see, you uh, you now have seen the the main principle. It's uh, now I'm just having uh, having fun and uh, sculpting a little bit my bulge tire. See, and if I want, take this one, this one, and maybe lift lift them a bit. And you see how my letters are following. And you you can see the actual move is going until the the very lip. Of the tire uh, and uh, the edge from the uh, near the rim, and and there we go. It's, and uh, now it's just a question of moving your tire aft and rotating it. And uh, now I have a busy. No, it should be okay. For this task, uh, if you have other modeler friends, share your, your progress. Uh, having several views on a tire sometimes help you get out of uh, my specialty, which is uh, getting into a rabbit hole. And uh, you need to watch a lot of uh, tire pictures because it's very easy to go far too far too much on a on a bulging. And uh, there. Are also, yesterday, uh, when doing the, the stream, I had uh, uh, a conversation about uh, two choices. Two choices appear now. Uh, do you want a totally flat undersurface for your tire, so that you have a very, almost a locking, a locking action when your tire sits on, a, on your display display plane, uh, plate or, or anything, which can be good, your choice, so that uh, at this moment you can set uh, either with Blender or with any other uh, modeling software, you can set an horizontal plane just uh, on your trade line and use it to slice your, your tire, or, which is more my view, Use your cage to try and perform uh, by selecting the appropriate vertices to try and perform the closest match to a flat uh, contact plane and keep your trade line uh, visible. Because uh, in my case, and that's the reason for obviously I'm choosing it for, for my case, when you when when you, you build uh, aircraft models for visual tasks such as uh, magazine articles or Facebook page or let's say a, sh uh, a show. Uh, at the moment, when when you flip your plane, you you don't want to take you 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 still your storytelling. You're, 
you're showing a, you try to to get the attention of your audience on the on the plane on its features on the weathering you've been doing or anything and seeing a trade line which has been cut or maybe uh, pierced because uh, for example uh, very long I had the habit to, to use two speaks to hold my uh, my tires uh, from below or sometimes uh, we don't go push the weathering until the lower face or sometimes we uh, we don't really paint carefully this, uh, the, the south point of uh, our wheel but when we flip the plane there's always that this little spark of uh, of of uh, lack of care or which pulls you out of the story and uh, pulls you out of the the environment of seeing a plane or and just you you have an insight i'm looking at a model so here i think it's a good opportunity to to flip your model and have a tire which would be rather clean all around and uh, push the, so that you, your, your picture uh, will be as immersive as possible i think it's a, it's a good opportunity it's a it's a better idea i think to to keep it this way but your, your choice your choice and uh, no so let's say for to push our work to to get the, uh, as much flatness as possible let's say i'll pick those vertices j z and here we are and again you see mainly uh, for the bulge we see which is very often the, uh, when you model a tire anyone every other modelers including me will be uh, looking at your bulge how you've been pushing it up at which point you've been put it's a it's a point of interest so you have a total control to be and the possibility to be very personal on it and, and making a, a fun point of uh, interaction with your friends and uh, you have your handles for for, the, for for this are those vertices right here and it's not more difficult than this because now let's say i'm happy with this bulge uh, in real i think i uh, could have kept it this way yes i go out of the edit mode i go back to the object mode and for those who are new to Blender, uh, let's say I want just to export my new tire. So I select my tire, go to File, Export, STL, Export STL, and uh, I said Export STL. I've been too fast. I've been too fast at clicking. And uh, let's say bulged tire YouTube and where is it I didn't notice where I where, where, where I recorded it I've been too fast sorry guys export it's going to my document document and now here's our tear and uh, ah, you see why I don't call it a tutorial I've been exporting the whole wheel so what have I done take my tear important thing I forgot export the STL and selection only selection only if I don't uh, tick this, uh, this box your export will be uh, your whole scene so if you have several objects even if they, don't, they are not uh, 
embedded and uh, touching each other, you'll be exporting your whole scene as an STL. So keep in mind, selection only, uh, keep uh, bulge die STL, which I export, close the other one, and let's get back to it. It should be better now. And here we go. You see? And uh, we have this uh, tire ready to print. And now it's isolated from the rim. It's a good opportunity because here we see, you see the, the artifacts uh, I was referring to about uh, at the beginning of the, of the video. It's the risk you have big, uh, with our uh, pin group. There's a transition between the frozen uh, vertices, edges and uh, faces, which are all uh, connected. The transition between those and the rest of the mesh, which be, will be affected by all your movements, you can create some uh, some artifacts and some little defects in your in your in your in your mesh, and that's the reason. Uh, sorry. That's the reason why you want to keep your pin group selection as thin as possible. Because uh, if those artifacts appear, uh, they'll be restrained at the contour uh, of our rim lip. Normally, they won't be visible, but that's why you need to be, to be to make a little bit tedious work at the, at the beginning. So that's the reason. So um, I have no worries with that. Uh, it will be it will be hidden by the rim lip. Or is the other solution if you don't want to, if you want to skip that step, is to be aware of it, and uh, at the beginning of your process when you design your tire and your your tire and your rims, make the choice to have a more easy uh, a more easy um, fit, a, loose, a looser fit, sorry, still keeping an outer edge on your rim. So that uh, you can take the risk to to come and sand the inner part of your of your tire if uh, there is any loose of uh, of perimeter and still keeping your rim edge to to hide uh, the story which happened uh, right behind. Your choice. You you have the you have the information, the clues, uh, the tools. You, your choice. And now we are pretty much done with with uh, our tire. Uh, if you have any question uh, about uh, the process, uh, we can have, take a few minutes to to discuss it. Up to you. Uh, I have a few more minutes for an, uh, for the beginners for a next file. It, it, uh, as there is there is a bit of delay between my my actual talk and what you see guys uh, just having a sip uh, of tea to take my breath again and so that if you have any question uh, I have the time to, to see them to see them appear just so go, go ahead guys if you have some and you see how much our traffic controllers are trained to to drink cold tea or cold coffee it's disgusting but we like it So seems we don't have any any questions. Seems good. Uh, the delay might be a bit long. I'm seeing actually on my uh, phone the delay appear. So uh, meanwhile, I'm going to switch my fusion on, and uh, we'll have a quick quick fusion drawing because uh, the aim uh, behind this is to encourage beginners I want to show you that on a few sketches a few drawings 
we might be able to to make an interesting part uh, available for for printing and uh, we uh, I try to show you some interesting things on uh, on my Facebook page on my and uh, my projects and uh, I also want to sh beginners to keep in mind you don't need uh, a whole lot of knowledge on uh, those softwares to have fun with your with your with your printer. Uh, you also can at the beginning work simple files with simple tools and uh, take pleasure with your printer it's uh, if you if you want to go on a long journey you 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 need some uh, simple simple projects and uh, entertaining projects otherwise you you might lose some some interest or going too complicated and uh, Always complicated, uh, complicated is is not a good way to, to keep your, your motivation, and uh, that's why I sometimes go for large projects such as a whole cockpit or uh, a conversion. But I like sometimes to. Uh, that's why I did a, a front wheel uh, a few weeks ago for my Tiger Cat. I like to revert and go to simple projects, which end up with a with a print. And uh, to keep entertained, to keep entertained each time, try to learn a bit, but uh, above all, to uh, try and and uh, and be uh, keep the fun. You you need to keep the fun. And uh, now I'm uh, watching what happened on the YouTube. I see quite some delay tonight. I hope you guys are still with me. Just taking a second to check. I'm sorry for that. in a second normally we are live checking the checking the live is still good right so the stream still uh, is still going I would download so I just have a doubt so sorry for that I just have a doubt on my live stream just need to check everything's going fine computer setup okay Right, so seems good. Let's switch into Fusion. So my uh, my idea came from a friend on Facebook who shared a, a nice walk around on a Jaguar, which is being restored uh, in uh, in Great Britain, I believe. I'm not sure. I think it's in Great Britain. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, there was a very nice. Uh, Nice walk around about the Jaguar and uh, especially the refueling probe and the probe tip. Uh, yes, it's a boy. It's a boy and uh, it's something where there are some cool details happening. And uh, you'll see that on Fusion, on Fusion 360, we should be able to, to make it rather quickly and uh, luckily we even have a good size uh, approximation so how about making a refueling probe tip And uh, so, guys, uh, 
if you came here for the blender uh, tutorial uh, I put commas tutorial uh, on blender sharing uh, if the fusion project uh, doesn't interest you no worries uh, don't feel obliged to to stay here I'm just adding this for for the beginners so that they can have a little bit of uh, so that they they are being exposed to a, a few Fusion 360 uh, maneuvers and moves, and they'll be very simple. So, if you if you don't have any interest uh, in this, no worries uh, to leave from now. Uh, please uh, don't don't feel uh, don't feel uh, obliged, or it's all good. No, no worries for that. So I'm going to insert as a canvas my reference picture, which is. Main most important thing, I'm going to my busy desk, desktop and I want this picture which I set on my, uh, let's say I'll be working on the, the front plane for, for instance You're welcome uh, Tom for uh, 3ds Max uh, I need to try this uh, I'll go and check if I can find a, a trial copy or I, I've never tried it uh, so far so uh, maybe I'll go and try it uh, uh, quite often here about uh, 3ds Max and uh, maybe it could be worth uh, trying it because obviously each software seems to have uh, its advantages and uh, so far I try to work with uh, the, the minimal amount of uh, softwares, but I see that, for, in, for instance, Blender has some some good good insights, some some good things, and uh, uh, I'll more and more see and fetch uh, good features and uh, in uh, in other softwares. And uh, yes, 3ds Max, I'll, I'll try and get a sample. Uh, sorry, my reference picture. Back, back at it. So I set my canvas on this plane. I just put it at screen size, right? And now I'm going to make a construction line on my plane, right here. And let's see. I want first a size uh, reference. Size reference. I'm going to. I'm going to start from the origin. Put a line. A construction line, and uh, let's read here. I'm going to edit my canvas, and flip it so that I can read my figures and. I'm going roughly, guys. Uh, normally, on the, I'm going to read uh, maybe let's say 36 centimeter, centimeters. Internet is a very good uh, way to find your to find some um, some reference, including sizes, especially uh, for instance for the refueling probe tip, as it's a standard thing in uh, NATO planes. I believe uh, the sizings shouldn't be that difficult to find. So I'm going to hit uh, 360, okay. so 360 millimeters on Fusion 360. So now I have a global uh, size and I'm going to edit my canvas to try and match my size. sort of moment you need a nice mouse and I'm trying to uh, look for a center line uh, seem not to be bad around here again that's some eyeballing as long as I have no 
no blueprints but it should be not that difficult to find I'm gonna review this after again too much funical to uh, <laughs> follow along all the stuff <laughs> you're, you're at work Fred uh, you're, you're working in the meantime I, I believe <laughs> And so now I'm going to. I'm not sure I need to. I make uh, no. I make a standard line just to be sure. And now the interesting thing is that uh, on any object which is cylindrical or objects that seem to have been uh, machined on a either a lath or a turning thing, you can decide to draw circles and extrude them to make cylinders and on top of them add, add other cylinders. But there is a very, very useful uh, feature which is the revolve tool. And uh, which in your mind, if you have the and the milling uh, movement and the property in mind, it's uh, the revolving tool will be ex exactly the same process. Ah, John, John, hello, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming, John. Uh, we are now done with uh, all the blender part. Uh, so you, uh, you won't be seeing me much uh, doing some blender thing now. Uh, you won't see me struggle with the interface, which is uh, more easy uh, for you than uh, for me. Uh, now I'm making a little bit of uh, extra for the very beginners to show the revolving tool and show that you don't need much, much uh, difficult tools to go on a quick project and uh, have fun uh, quickly with your printer and have a maybe, uh, let's say, uh, let's cross fingers in less than an hour, make a, a cool STL file and uh, enjoy your, your printer. It's uh, just doing this to try and catch attention of beginners to, so that uh, an aircraft part will help them uh, listen to my uh, ugly French accent and, uh, and look at, uh, looking at an aircraft part will help uh, sticking to the computer and, and see the whole process. So I'm going to begin with the straight lines and now I'm going to draw what I want to look like a section of this cylinder and uh, I see there are some cutouts and so here there's a groove so I'll be making a groove here. So I decided to make uh, to keep the sizing as for the real part, and uh, we can uh, rescale it afterwards. Or you could decide as well. You could uh, decide as well to to start and. Uh, at the very beginning, to uh, let's say your your measure is uh, at one thirty second scale or one twenty second scale, uh, up to you. Um, I'm not taking too much worryness tonight on the on the on the size. I, I just want to show the 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 tools which which would be involved. J just. Don't be too too, uh, too worried about uh, proper sizes. I just want to show the, uh, quickly how the the necessary tools to to make this drawing. So right here. So I'm making a notch where I want to groove, and I'm moving upwards. And uh, you see here there is more sort of uh, rounded shape so I take the this plane you see I'm going I want my line to end up lined up with my previous drawing so I just tell fusion I want to line up with this dot 
and when I move you see the dot line and now I have my contour <coughs> sorry I can pull that one a bit further here you could decide to put at the middle of the groove uh, let's do it at the middle of the groove I can decide I have a symmetry so I take a construction line and say my middle of groove would be somewhere here so you see uh, I show this line and so Fusion takes it as a reference and makes a and shows me the square angle and now I'm going to come back to standard line and I make half a groove which is done I'm using the tiny handle here and make it and I'll be uh, did I have a snap I want to make it perpendicular to my symmetry axis so that I know that when I put my symmetry and uh, get the other line I will have a flush and a seamless uh, line here uh, very often when you have a symmetry you need to to check with the very the very last handle of your of your t-spline and uh, very often you need to make it perpendicular to your your symmetry axis so, so that when you symmetry take your symmetry sorry so that you get a, a flush result you see right now the top part I'm doing it uh, quick and uh, eyeballing just I want you to see uh, the main uh, features Oop. making a, a notch here and now I'm on the proper tip of this uh, mail uh, thing which is in French in uh, French aviation they call it a gland which a gland is a uh, both the, the the fruit of the oak tree but also the gland is a very tip of uh, a cock's man a man's cock sorry so uh, i bet in uh, any country there are such uh, uh, the calibrate function yes john uh, we could we could uh, use the calibrate function uh, I didn't because I'm going quick and uh, you have a delay with the stream. I'm sorry for that. I'm not taking too much care of the measures. I've been taking the actual measure even uh, instead of rescaling down to 130 second or 148. Uh, I'll have on, on late, later projects uh, the discussion of, uh, let's say, for 130 second, you'll, you'll want this sort of uh, this size of groove or. Um, I'm just not talking too much about measures on uh, or scale on, uh, on on this uh, on this sketch. I'm just trying to make a, a quick a quick drawing to show the revolve tool and uh, a few project uh, pro cut projections, not more than this. Just to to make a, a quick drawing uh, after my, my blender thing. Uh, really, just uh, just to be taken as a as a, a, a bonus uh, an extra an extra uh, demonstration uh, no not this one I'm going to up 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 and now we'll be going on the very end tip and just follow the contour And same at the very end of our contour, we want a flush and nicely rounded tip for our gland. So we make it perpendicular. And now, if we want to use a revolve tool, we want a closed surface, which just appeared now. It uh, you saw maybe the color has changed. Now it's nicely closed I can finish up my sketch I 
can select okay going to revolve axis is the center line which uh, which i did the contour has been selected i'm putting my canvas away and here we go i have a new body uh, the revolve tool has many settings so i've been a bit too fast uh, let's let's go back and i'll show you again the revolve tool really uh, really for 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 beginners the contour so the, in english i believe it's a uh, surface here it is the axis the center and here we go you can choose uh, different settings you'll have plenty of time to explore them you can decide to evolve it all around your axis or not and uh, you can decide to make uh, a section a part of revolution on one side on uh, which means you can decide how far you go around on the side how far you go on the other side or you can decide to go symmetrically on each side of your uh, of your starting point of your starting uh, of the starting radius uh, of your revolution lots lots of uh, possible of possibilities and there we go and you'll see that uh, any notch in your profile will be creating a groove any hard cut in your profile will be making a uh, hard edge on your drawing see and cool thing is afterward you still can move if you haven't constrained your control z you can decide decide to constrain your drawing or not some points or not or you can decide to afterwards keep some freedom of uh, move to uh, to make some adjustment you see but uh, i wanted to show to beginners this, uh, this tool because uh, maybe the the very first one which is shown on uh, tutorials is the extrusion and uh, when we see cylind cylinders we often start thinking by a circle to extrude and actually in uh, aviation parts uh, car parts or in, in lots of me mechanical processes lots of uh, shapes can be re reproduced and resolved by uh, the revolution tool because in the real life uh, those parts have been machined by a, a sort of uh, uh, it's a difficult words to pronounce for, for a French guy like me. For, uh, anything uh, built on a lath or milled, uh, the, the revolution tool is very often the, the, the tool you, you look for. That's why I wanted to take a bit of time to, sh to show it to you guys. And uh, let's say, for example, here we have this band which is recessed and uh, which I didn't make so there would be several ways to uh, there would be several ways to make this uh, band appear uh, as recessed either I could go back and edit my drawing let's do it for you for instance uh, need my canvas it's a uh, thumb somewhere here so I'm making a, a rectangle here and if I edit that one I remove this part of cylinder done and I, I uh, maybe it's located a bit too high just for, to to show a bit uh, a few hints it's um, i'm not claiming any ac accuracy uh, in there uh, there would be another solution because uh, I, it's, it would be interesting to have this uh, once you have seen it uh, it's maybe visual and it will be useful for your further thinking you can use the revolve tool 
very often to solve some problems. I hide the body to select the notch I've been drawing and you can perform a cut around your axis and uh, right try to have this sort of image uh, in mind because uh, that's a sort of image that helps me uh, solve some uh, some problems when I, I want to replicate a shape uh, try thinking like in the real world uh, either if you're scratch building if you try thinking what would I do on the real part when scratch building uh, there are a lot of uh, shapes that we create by re removing some material and uh, for example if you think uh, with a lath I would have been scraping the part and uh, creating this recessed ring you have the cut in, available in, uh, in the revolve tool or if, for instance if you, if, you see, uh, if you don't have a lath yeah, yeah, I would have been using a file and uh, created my groove by turning my, my, my file you have the the the, uh, the cut operation in the revolve tool is really really helpful. It's uh, and uh, same we we could have imagined to have created a plain body here and let's say in a second move created this profile for the notch and there again we could have performed a, a cut a, re a revolving cut to create uh, the, this sort of shape or afterwards. Uh, I'm going to validate. Afterwards, if I want to add uh, some other grooves, I can decide to, to make another sketch and uh, place my grooves because I don't want to, to revert to the previous one. It's useful or not to go on another one. Your choice. Uh, but keep in mind, scribing on a, on a rounded shape, you can scribing or even going further and creating a, a recessed uh, ring the revolve tool is a really really useful one and a, a powerful one and uh, so what could we take some more interesting here uh, something that uh, when I look at the picture uh, on the part you're modeling try to keep in mind what is being reproduced regularly as an array uh, it's the same uh, parts are, have been designed by people using this kind of software the same mindset as you are currently using and try to see where you can put some arrays for, let's say for example this notch uh, I don't know how you see it guys but I see a projected cut and it seems to have been uh, we'd, we'd need some other picks but one two maybe three and four we have room for four of these cuts so le let's make one uh, one of those uh, yeah okay so i'm going to Uh, where's my origin? Right. Show my origin. I want to take my plane and let's see how where this cut is. So I need to go and cut the edge. Mm, I'm below. Yeah, okay. It's more easy when you show your canvas. I want to go and cut in my edge. So I'm going just roughly at the beginning. Set a rectangle. I finish my sketch. I hit extrusion. I select my profile. And I'm going to go in the symmetry and I'm going to make a cut and go all the way through. I'm pulling my handle so that I'm sure I, I'm going everywhere. Validate. And now let's see how this looks. So it's a bit long. So as it's a bit too long, I need to reduce this depth just by dragging my rectangle. 
still a bit too long. I reduce it a bit. Not too bad. And uh, maybe a little bit of height. Just a bit, tiny bit. Oh, why not? Sorry, here we go. And uh, see, by boiling 2.0, uh, I'm not too bad. And uh, I'm going to replicate this function, which is again, I still have my, uh, my center line. It's just it's a cylindrical shape. I'm going to make an array, a circular array of. I could choose the faces, but I also can choose the function which I've been using. The function I'm going to look in my history. Uh, maybe I could show it. Uh, yes, I could show it directly on the drawing, or I can go and take it in my uh, in my history line. I think you, you'd say around my center line. And how many of them? Uh, we made a guess. There were four of them. Okay. And there we go. You see. And uh, what else would we have uh, as an uh, arrays? We have uh, picture will be a bit more clear. Uh, what do we have? We have those no notches in the in this ring and uh, those ones for, for instance so let's make uh, those ones and uh, we won't go too far we'll, let's make the, those notches uh, maybe some rivets over there and maybe the 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 two locks and uh, will be will be done for for tonight so, uh, how am I going to make those? I need to see my shape a little bit. Mm. There are always many possibilities. Mm. You have different choices of where you're going to set your sketch. I like because uh, it might be necessary, but I need as a visual to have the impression I'm drawing in front of. Uh, I have my paper sheet ahead of my of my plan. It's just a mental thing, a, a visual thing I need to see uh, to visualize my uh, my task. So I want. Uh, this uh, we need uh, we need to raise a ring uh, first. Let's do it quickly. So I'm just moving back here. I need to finish my sketch. Sorry. I want to raise a ring first. I'm going to modify my sketch. Just add a small rectangle here. Finish my sketch. I modify that one and I add this ring. Done. Oh. So I get back here. I modify my the sketch we were setting. Right. So we want those. Uh, okay. I want half a circle. And I'm going all the way down. So uh, if I want to go at the very side of my circle, you see, I hit I just show fusion. I want the center and I go back laterally, I have my dot line and I know that following this I have I'll be snapping at the very uh, at the very side of my circle. I'm going down 
I'm doing the same here. You see, I'm, I'm fetching the very side. I close my, I close my shape. Uh, little thing that we won't be replicating is that uh, I could have turned a bit my plane because we are not aligned here but uh, we won't be ma making this uh, difference uh, tonight and you see I can pull my handles uh, I'm going to try and keep my things aligned so I want to constrain my center just because I can help right not, uh, not perfectly centered okay right and now I have my sketch which is a head I want to make a cut, select my profile, I'm going to start from the object, which is this ring, and I want to cut, let's say, 2, two millimeters inside, right, and I have my notch, and again, we, have, uh, we can select an array of this extrusion in cut, I did not know Lath or La, uh, was also a French word. I'll check my dictionary. Uh, maybe in Belgium or the French, which is a bit different in Belgium or in Canada and other countries, uh, we'd say un tour in, in, uh, in French. I'll, ch I'll check my dictionary. It's interesting, uh, Fred. I did not know that. So uh, I selected my function axis, and uh, there seem to be uh, let's see one two I would say four of them, maybe more. You see why you need more reference picks. One uh, I have a quadrant here. I would say four, but you see we should have turned them around. But uh, we are making just a, qu a quick thing tonight. So four. Uh, there is an interesting feature in uh, your arrays. I'm taking the opportunity to show it. There is a hide box which you can uh, activate here, and uh, you see it's been activating some tick box uh, on your drawing. You can decide on a on an array to select four options, but still not not to use uh, them all. It could be interesting, for example, when performing arrays of uh, rivet lines, when you want to, to have an event spacing of rivets, and sometimes you want just to remove a rivet uh, at an intersection because it would be almost uh, overlapping the other, the other one, which would come from a perpendicular line or a, uh, an intersecting uh, line. Keep in mind that this uh, masking uh, function uh, can, be, can be very useful. So, okay, we have those notches. I'm going quick, guys. Uh, I won't be making the top ones. Same principle. You could you, you could reuse uh, this sketch, and uh, you see actually they seem to be lined lined up. So you could edit your sketch, make the same shape, uh, a bit longer one. You see uh, a circle connect your uh, your lines to the very edge of your of your volume here, and uh, make an array. Right, so what could we do quickly? Uh, let's say the, those uh, those features are quite cool. Uh, let's make them. So there must be the screws for the locking uh, mechanism. Again, uh, several possibilities. Uh, I have more ease to see my projection from a remote plane 
and starting from a remote plane and project them, project them in the flesh, I'm, uh, I, have, uh, I have a very visual uh, mindset. Uh, you could also start from the middle center and start from the center and extrude outward. Uh, always lots lots of uh, possible options. Uh, I tend to be uh, to to have a very visual and uh, memory and uh, mindset and I, uh, I, uh, I see the revolving tool as a, an animation in my head so all the projection uh, cuts I, uh, I actually see the animation in my head uh, before doing uh, when when seeking at them and when choosing them and uh, uh, I'm more comfortable uh, at uh, replicating uh, this process so I'm going to we use this plane and uh, locate roughly where I want to make this cut. So uh, the cut seems to be quite flush. So, but uh, it, we need to keep our edge. So I'm, I'm using uh, two circle points instead of starting from a center. I'm pulling a radius. I'm starting from the side of my circle and I'm going more this way let's go and now I still can move a little bit and pick my center um, uh, I think I'm good this way and so uh, you see on the other side we see we don't go all the way so we'll have four holes uh, so we're going to project this one first. Uh, remove my canvas for a second. You see, and uh, when you don't select uh, anything on our extrusion, you start with a new body creation. If you're in the middle of nowhere, uh, sometimes it can make a join if you start from an existing plane according to what you've done previously and uh, when you start from the middle of nowhere you start as a new body and you, when you hit a material it becomes a cut so I'm going just to project what I need right and now I need the other face which will be a mirror uh, I promise I haven't prepared this one, so uh, that's really how I would do in, in live with more discipline, uh, with measures and etc. So I've been mirroring those two ones, and now we want to mirror this pair and make it appear at 180 degrees uh, outwards. And then we have two possibilities. We can make another mirror of the first extrusion, select the mirror which has been creating the second one, and this time we're going to choose the other plane, and there we go, other face is done. Another possibility, which is, to me is uh, less logical, uh, would have been to select those two functions and make a rotation of those around this axis per uh, 180 degrees but having used the mirror thing uh, I tend to naturally go and think mirror again for, for the other part but it would have it would have worked uh, as well and uh, here we are and uh, what would we need we would need some cavities for for the locks for, for instance uh, so we'd be somewhere here again uh, the cavity I'm, th I'm thinking projection so I'm, uh, I go to a, a remote plane I'm, I'm, uh, I don't need to, uh, I pick a remote plane just randomly it's just for my, for my thinking process that I, I work this way remote plane, start a sketch 
and uh, now I'm going to be a little bit careful because I want to have my center line uh, projected on my sheet so that I can make a, a center and symmetry correctly so there are many ways to do it I'm going to project uh, let's say a part of uh, this body yes I can project it see and now I have this line and I can pick the middle of this line and I'll, uh, I'm going to set a construction line you see uh, when I run along a line the triangle appears I have the middle and I'm going either perpendicular to the other line and it happens it's logic it's uh, the, we have the triangle it's also the the center of this line and now I have recovered a center line on my uh, on my sketch keep in mind we are still we are on a on a sheet ahead of our shape uh, but that's my uh, I bet uh, there would be one way of of making this per per per, per modeler and uh, but th that's my that's my mindset and now I now I have this center line I want to have a centered rectangle and for that I'm going to build half a rectangle first for my cavity uh, this way and I'm going to mirror the three outer edges against or along I'm not too sure how to say it in English I'm going to use the, the, the middle as a mirror line and now we have a centered uh, mirror, uh, rectangle that we'll be using you see it's more visible here as a tool to go and project a cavity down there right and now my, uh, I can see that uh, my cavity might be a bit large so I'm just picking the edge of my rectangle and that's, that's why I decided not to I decided not to go to to constrain my uh, sketch because I'm just eyeballing this like a naughty guy and now we want to have some uh, locks uh, pop out of this and uh, what I'm thinking is that I'm going to hide all this I want my lock let's have a, site, a quick sight on the, on the lock I see a sharp uh, shape uh, you know what I'm going to extrude a rectangle first to draw a rectangle down there inside uh, so I'm on the but uh, I'm not sure I selected properly my face I'm sorry I'm going to I'm selecting this face create a sketch I'm going to recover to project the cutout so that I have some geometry and to pick up my center line again Up, triangle middle I'm going perpendicular and obviously we have another middle and now I'm going to make a smaller rectangle so that I have uh, something which is inside to symmetrize it Up. and now I'm going just to extrude that guy as I'm going to make a new body with it to make things a bit more simple I'm going just out of my cavity right and now let's see how it looks from the side so we see uh, it comes at an angle and gets back into it so you might have guessed what I have in mind 
I'm going to I'm going to hide that guy. What did I do? Uh, sorry. Nope. Yes. Up. Picking on the edge. Picking the edge. Again. Now let's see where we are. We want to go lower. So I pick this point. Uh, nope. How about this? Not bad. And finish my sketch. Just select extrusion, those two profiles, and I project a cut. There we go. Not too bad. Um, maybe a bit high over there. And for that, I'm just going to pick that line and lower it. And you see how I can adjust. And uh, I could also adjust the height of this point by adjusting the height of my extrusion. You see? Uh, let's do it to show it quickly. I my minus 66, or maybe I have the no, it's not the it's not a good one. Sorry, that one. I could just lower if I need to to adjust the height of my my triangle. And I want. Now to have the same uh, the same feature on the other side, so I'm going to mirror my cavity projection projection first, which was that feature. So circular array of my cut. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, I'm not mirroring. I can make a, uh, an array of around this axis per. 180 degrees. Uh, why not doing this way? I need two. You see, ah, yes, sorry, I messed up. I'm starting to be late. Okay, so I have my cavity, which has been an array of uh, two around 360 degrees. It could uh, it could also have been a mirror of this the projection function on this particular plane, and then now uh, I did another body because I want just to show why it could be interesting sometimes. I want to mirror my uh, lock here, so I use mirror, and I will be mirroring that body according to that plan so that when you have a, a several functions to replicate on a side creating a body and a sculpting or creating your body on a side will be gathering all the functions in a, in 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 it's being a, a separate body and you when uh, making your mirror you you won't need to go and, pl and uh, click all the different functions it's just to save a little bit of time and uh, once i'm done i'm going to merge everything and keep a minimal number of uh, bodies as long as i, I don't need uh, some more and uh, because I know my friend will, hopefully he, he'll be looking, wants me to be disciplined. Uh, and I, uh, I, I'm still a learner in uh, Fusion, uh, obviously, and uh, I'm now uh, at the point in my uh, progression course uh, at using less bodies and uh, going more with... Uh, 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 I'm looking for English words, for new components. 
right? And uh, getting uh, having a, a better organization. Uh, mirror looks more easy to my eyes as well. Love the tutorial. Uh, that's very cool, Fred, because uh, really uh, I'm trying to, to keep you interested by I, I'm using a, an aircraft part and uh, purposely I'm using the, the less uh, function uh, as I can. I'm not being very disciplined. Uh, we'll have uh, some more time to discuss about uh, the sizing, uh, about how to... Um, uh, at the very beginning, for instance, we could have set uh, the height value. We could have, uh, looking for my words, uh, starting to be late. Uh, we could have, uh, what's the word? We could have calibrated. We could have calibrated our sketch so that the measures on the sketch are uh, actual measures for your part, for your at size, uh, let's say at 132, you, you, there are some functions to, to do it. I'll try and make, uh, I'll find a part and I'll try to make this sort of demonstration. Again, I'm not a tutorial guy. I'll, I'll make this sort of demonstration on the, the part I will have several measures and I will be able to go far less eyeballing and much more with uh, some blueprints or, or actual uh, measures. Uh, Maybe someday uh, I'll need uh, uh, an Exocet missile or uh, uh, I know that I might have a, a lightning to make uh, next year. So maybe we'll, we'll make a missile or, or something and I'll try to find actual measures and we'll try to look for good profile pictures and do the calibrating things and uh, everything. So far I just wanted guys to show you the, the Revolve tool. I wanted just to show you uh, the mindset you have because I use a lot of cuts in my drawings and for that I need to visualize uh, the cut and once you've seen the picture with uh, the red cut projecting uh, and uh, cutting the, the material into, into the part when you'll be thinking at, uh, on future projects, uh, you'll have maybe, and uh, hopefully, you'll have this process come to your mind, and uh, that's really wh what I wanted to show you. And uh, just maybe uh, last quick fun, this, uh, this array could be interesting. Uh, this array of uh, rivets. Okay, just let's just make this, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be ending up with that one okay uh, uh, going again to my remote uh, plane which is here making a sketch uh, anyone will you will all make your personal habits i like to work on remote planes uh, ahead of my uh, part because I, I need to have uh, my picture of a paper sheet on top uh, in my in my mind I have my paper sheet on top of my of my port and but as I, as I do that I need to get my ge geometry back and very often first thing I do is to to make a projection of the geometry on my remote sheet so that I can make I can get my contours my uh, uh, extremities and my centers and uh, and everything so we so we want two lines of circles uh, so do they overlap or not yes they seem to uh, yes the, the south of this circle is going lower and the north of that one. Right, okay. So, I'm going to, uh, let's be, let's try and be, I'm going to replicate. Uh, I'm trying to find a clever way not to do this uh, in, a in, in as less smooth as possible. We, mm, 
and now thinking at a method of, uh, as you, you might remember a bit earlier, an array where would, we would pick half of them and another array. And we'd pick the others. Yes, we're going to do this like that. I'm going to remove my canvas. So I um, choose this contour. I start from here. No, uh, sorry. Make an extrusion of this contour. I start from the object, which is here. And let's say I, I raise my rivet power, such as. I'm just making a simple rivet. I'm not the, uh, just uh, the interesting thing here is uh, the pattern. I'm not making the, the edge and the bump. Uh, it, it wouldn't be difficult and interesting. I'm just making that rivet here. Maybe it's a little bit small. And now I have my rivet. I'm going to make a first pattern of my extrusion around this axis and uh, two, three, three, that must be 12. What I'm doing roughly to count, one, two, three, I have a quarter here, three per, per four, 12, which will be Keeping right, and now for the second one, I'm going to just raise that one, increase that a little bit of size. I'm going to make, a, I'm going to use the same sketch. make another circle I'm going to constrain I'm telling the, uh, the software I want to have the same side uh, same size sorry to I'm just making some eyeballing to have an approximate rendering because I'm just looking for the, the pattern which will be interesting to make and you see so now I'm going to make an extrusion of that guy I'm, try, I'm trying to find a way not to calculate uh, because I, I'm too lazy for that. I don't want to calculate a shifting uh, angle to displace and rotate my, uh, my pattern. It would probably would be uh, not too difficult, but at this time of the day, uh, I'm just looking for another way to so start from object. I'm going to raise. Doesn't want. Uh, yeah. uh, that funny thing is happening. Why? Let's do it again. Not to show what's happening. I'm starting. Okay, I have an error because probably I have this rivet here. So, hmm, what could we do? Uh, let's see. Uh, 
think I won't uh, be able not to. I'm going on the other side. Uh, now I'll have a rivet as well. So apparently my method won't, uh, my initial plan won't work because of this rivet being here and uh, uh, the Fusion wouldn't be able to calculate a new rivet extruded from there. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to try this rotate my circle around I won't cope uh, an angle uh, manipulation so we have twenty we have twelve rivets we have one position between each so all in all we have 24 rivets but we decide to sh to show half of them the 12th one so we have 24 and so my angle would be 360 divided by 24 um, uh, would i be correct doing this I'm not too sure because it's late at this time. I'm not that. Yes, uh, should be good. So now I'm going to make an extrusion of my new drawing. I start from an object, which is you. And uh, how far did we go up? 